Okay. April 2nd, section 13, 1. This is because this was an actual geometry lesson we did earlier this year. Okay. We're going to do the Pythagorean theorem and sine, cosine, tangent today. Tomorrow, we're going to learn how to use our calculators to finish off the problem. Today, we're just going to be setting it up. But before we start, we need to do some radical review. Okay, so real quickly, we need to practice squaring radicals. If you square a square root, what does that do? It cancels each other out. The square root and the square cancel. So the square root of 15 squared is simply 15. I want you to write these quickly. Three square roots of five squared. Is everything under a radical? No. So only the radical part cancels itself out, but the three is a whole number, and it's also being squared. So that means that you've got to square the three, which gives you 9, you cancel out the square root basically over the 5, and you put the two things together. So it's 9 times 5, which is 45. What do you have a perfect square? Like if it's the square root of 20. Square root of 25 squared, it would just be 25. Okay. All right. Because the square root of 25 is 5, and 5 squared oh, yeah. is 25. What is this? <laughs> 5. Very simple. Square root squared cancels each other out. God bless you. You're simply left with 5. Two square roots of seven squared. Say it in two steps. Four times seven. Four <coughs> times seven. We're squaring the two, but the radical simply being eliminated on the seven. So that would be 28. Seven square roots of two squared. Say it in two steps. 49 times 2, which is 98, okay? Nine over five. Nine over five. The three is a whole number. It's in the numerator. We square it. The 5 is in the denominator, and still, the radical simply goes away. So this would be 9 fifths. Very, very simple. Square root of 2 over whole number 2 squared. You are right, Parker, but let's get there first before we reduce. What's in the numerator? I mean, like, after you square it. 2. What's in the denominator after you square it? 4. And what does that reduce to? 1 half. Okay? Remember, we cannot cancel these 2's as they are because 1 is under a radical. This is not actually 2, like I'm holding up two fingers. It's the square root of 2, which is a decimal, 1 point something something, divided by 2. In over the square root of 3, and the whole thing is squared. What would that be? Squared over 3. Very good. N squared over 3. Okay. The Pythagorean theorem, we've sort of introduced this already. The Pythagorean theorem can be used to find one side of a right triangle when you know two of the other sides. But you have to know two out of the three sides. Pythagorean theorem is only used in a right triangle, which means it has a right angle or a 90 degree angle. And it's the square of the hypotenuse set equal to the sum of the squares of each leg. Each other 
If it's an isosceles right triangle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter what order or what you assign A and what you assign B. What does matter, though, is that you make sure that it's the hypotenuse that's by itself. Now, how do you identify the hypotenuse on a right triangle just by looking at the triangle? It's the longest side. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle. Hurley, pay attention. Sit up. Get some pep in your step. You okay? You okay? Okay. You look like you just lost your puppy. Did you just lose your puppy? Okay. <laughs> Okay, in this right triangle, and by the way, we only know it's a right triangle because this has been identified as a right angle. You can never just assume that you have a right angle because it looks like it. Now, in this right triangle, the most important thing when you're using the Pythagorean theorem is that you identify the hypotenuse. Is 3, 7, or x the hypotenuse? X. x. So x squared goes by itself. Now the order that you add the next two in doesn't matter. Because if you add 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3, you still get 5, right? Okay, so if I start with 3 squared, plus 7 squared. Is that 10 squared? No. Our order of operation says we must do exponents long before we add. Okay, so we need to actually square those numbers. So we have 9 plus 49, which is 58. And if I'm looking for the value of x, and x is being squared, what do I do, Lamar? I take the square root of both sides. Now, earlier when we were solving these problems, we said every time you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you've got to show that that's plus or minus, correct? All right. But here, in this ge uh, geometry problem, we're looking for the length of a side. Is length ever expressed as negative? No. So all we need is the positive answer because length is never negative. Now, if the rattle can be reduced, you need to reduce it. But 58 does not have any pairs. 58 is 2 times 29, and that's two prime numbers. So it's simply expressed as the square root of 58. Leave it as a wrap. <coughs> In this right triangle, the most important part that I identify is the what? Hypotenuse. So which one is the hypotenuse? X. X. <laughs> X is squared and goes by itself. The other two are squared, then added together. Solve this equation. should have had x squared equals 52, and from here we take the square root of both sides to get that x is equal to the square root of 52. Now, 52 is 2 times 26. No. Yeah. 